Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today for Tuesday morning. Hey, October 19th, 2021, the man they call Meathead, and the lovely Linda K. once again. Good morning, lovely Linda. Good morning, Meathead. Thank you for the kind greetings this crisp autumn Tuesday morning. Yeah, it's a, it's... I'm not I'm not up against the window anymore letting the breeze blow in. Nah, it's a little cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving where we're getting days closer to Crown Jewel, days yep. closer to Bound for Glory, days closer to, to Blizzard Brawl. Yes. I was trying to go in chronological order, but I know, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, days closer I mean, to Halloween. If we're getting closer that. chronologically, days closer to me shaving off my face and growing a mustache. That's where that we're too. going. That too. That too. First comes our birthday, then Halloween, then November. There we go. And hey, you know, to be honest, uh, we're going to talk about collar and elbow in just a second, but you know, I'm thinking, boy, I love my collar and elbow hoodie, sweatshirts, my pullovers. I need to get this PT going. I can't get my arms up in the air. Mm. So how the hell am I going to put on a hooded sweatshirt? Well, maybe uh, if there's still some of those good brothers, summer tank tops, that yeah. would be a, le- a little easier for you to put on. I know it's technically not summer anymore, but who says you can't wear a summer tank top any time of the year. And you can do that by going to collar and elbow brand.com selecting your favorite in the latest and greatest in wrestling street fashions. Okay. Of course, we've got the Halloween t-shirts, you know, Halloween, I guess I mentioned just around the corner, make sure to go to collar and elbow brand.com and to save yourself 10% off use promo code Linda K that's L I N D A K A Y save 10% off your order. Nice. Hey, uh, I got a couple of things I want to touch before we get into breaking down Raw from last night. Uh, a couple of news notes here. First off, very positive news coming out of Impact Wrestling. Uh, Bound for Glory sold out. Ooh. I don't know what size building they're running, but who cares? They're going to have a full house, and that's going to make for an amazing show. That is tremendous. And in the City of Lights and Viva. Las Vegas, that's going to be a hot show and some hungry fans out there for some great wrestling action. So, yeah, and great news for Impact. And you know who's rumored to show up there? Uh, a guy that you've met personally, stood side by side with, named Adam, um, oh. formerly known as the Monster Among Men. Uh, the, there is heavy talk that uh, Braun Strowman, formerly from WWE, will be debuting with Impact Wrestling come Bound for Glory. Yeah, that is indeed true. That would be awesome to see it would be great to get a huge man formerly known as braun Strowman, adam let's see him back on the screen a wisconsin man that's awesome if he does make his impact debut this saturday at bound for glory yeah i absolutely love the story when i found it out because i seen a picture of him with braun uh or excuse me with ryan braun on wwe one day that his first name he literally chose because of Ryan Braun, former Milwaukee Brewer, because he is a Milwaukee kid and grew up and was a big Milwaukee Brewers fan. So they have Braun Strowman backstage at a WWE Raw to let him know, hey, you know, I chose my name because of you. That That's tremendous. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, <coughs> and um, it's kind of big news from over the weekend. We were wondering how it was going to look. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. The numbers are in for the head-to-head segments from Friday night uh, with SmackDown and Rampage. Now, uh, as predicted, SmackDown did win technically the head-to-head. Not that they were intentionally going head-to-head, even though they'll say they never were, but let's be honest, it's Cold War. They are going head-to-head. But AEW did win one specific demo. They won the 18-49. to Specifically, they won that head-to-head segment, 18-49 to as well. So from 10 Eastern to 10.30 Eastern, SmackDown was commercial-free. Uh, Rampage was commercial free through the entire Punk versus Matt Seidel match, and they outdrew SmackDown in the ratings for that particular segment, which was 328,000 to WWE's 285,000 in the 18 to 49 demo. Is there more to read into this? Probably. Are we going to? No. It's, it was cool to have. We're going to have it again this Friday night. We're going to have. Uh, Rampage on Friday, Dynamite on Saturday, and SmackDown, who knows? They might, you know, for the season premiere, they might go, uh, you know, extend it as well. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Maybe what they can do is instead of having uh, um, like something different than the buyout on YouTube, it could be an extended 
half hour or hour through FS1 again. But this time, yeah. like, just that extended piece. You know what I mean? I will say that, you know, if WWE would, were to try the exact same thing and say, hey, we're going to do a buy-in to SmackDown because they aired late and the talent that they would put on during the buy-in, I don't know if it would have that much of a buzz because of what AEW does. AEW's roster isn't as top-heavy as WWE's is. They have a lot of very established international stars, right? Uh-huh. AEW's strength is how strong their core is and their lower part of their card. So when you have that buy-in, you're going to have talents that you still want to see that just aren't on the big show that night. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And you know what, now that I think about it, with the baseball playoffs going on, is SmackDown going to be in FS1 again? Or, it I mean, might. I don't think it will, though. I think that might be travel day for the American League. Ah, uh, okay. Well, regardless, they can add that extra. If they want to do something similar to last week, they can... Uh, Put that extra half hour, hour, whatever, on the other Fox affiliate. Let's go with that. Fair enough. All right. So let's talk about Raw from last night. You ready to talk a little bit of Raw? Yeah, let's do it. Ready to get Raw? Ooh. <laughs> let's talk Raw. Um, this is the go-home to Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel will be this Thursday morning or afternoon, depending on what time zone you're in, 12 Eastern, p.m., 11 a.m. Central. Crown Jewel is going to be happening this Thursday in uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, the show opens up with uh, Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. Now, they're going to go back and forth, and they're going to have a main event. This is typical WWE, and it, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's very typical. It's very predictable. Main event segment's going to be opened up with a promo at the beginning of a three-hour show. Your thoughts? I mean, I, at first, when I heard Charlotte's music kick in, because they were promoing. Or you the, thought it was the... match. I thought it was just to kind of follow the formula that they have been doing um, pretty often the past couple of weeks, but instead it wasn't, that's okay. I mean, you know, kind of predictable, like you said, but I mean, if that's going to be the hot title match of the evening, why not get it started getting everybody going with a confrontation that, you know, leaves you wanting more. Absolutely. Hey, opening match. Uh, was the final of the men's King of the Ring tournament, not the final, excuse me, semifinals. The winner of this match goes to the finals at Crown Jewel. And I love the little promo that we had between Woods and Kofi. Kofi, you know what? New day for WWE being who they are. They haven't broken them up. They haven't, haven't had them feuding against each other. It's just been three brothers taking care of each other, being brothers for each other. And now Kofi is rooting on Xavier Woods. And he's going to be in the semifinals against Jinder Mahal down at ringside to make sure Viren Shanky don't interfere. The winner of the match, I thought was obvious, Xavier Woods. Yeah, he is one step closer to achieving that dream of his to be king of the ring. I know we kind of touched on this before. Um, I want him to get to be king of the ring. Maybe not this year. Just it's almost too much of a given too obvious so i don't i'm not sure i do know that we're gonna get a excellent match between him and finn balor though at yeah. crown jewel that one i'm looking forward to absolutely you know my little recaps that i read off i'm surprised that i didn't put this down at first because now i'm just thinking about it uh in the back when we had uh austin theory you know starting to cut a promo here comes the 24 <laughs> 7 circus if you will run by and Austin Theory asks our truth, why did you interrupt me? Do you know who I am? He goes, no, but I have a theory. Mm-hmm. That shit's hilarious to me. I don't <laughs> care. Dad joke 101. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hit him at the end. He goes, I'll, I'll, I'll accept the challenge on a one condition. If you can get permission from your mommy to stay up late, got him. And then he just left. That was absolutely tremendous. Uh, the match ended up being Theory versus Hardy because Truth said the challenge was to get a match. Here's Jeff Hardy, my friend, and they're both North Carolinians. Uh, the winner of the match is Austin Theory. He took his selfie with Jeff. Jeff woke up after the selfie and got his own selfie at the end. There's the payoff. I'm happy we got to see the picture taken. Uh, not just the one that Austin took again last night, but the one that Jeff took after the fact. On his I, phone. Yes. Yeah, so I hope that goes that chapter between the two of them. It, it was a nice way to bring Austin Theory on. Like a little the- button. At the end of a joke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we have, uh, you know, our Austin Theory reintroduced 
to the raw masses, the raw crowd, and, you know, we're already meant to hate him, but I liked it. It provided some comedy, even that little bit with R-Truth, and it's got Jeff Hardy. I don't know who you are, but I got a theory. <laughs> it's also got Jeff Hardy back uh, um, on top of that feud, and hopefully that, that was squashed away, but I, I definitely enjoyed that piece, too. I really don't like face versus face feuds when it comes for the big belts because they're too chummy with each other. And that's what we're getting right now with Biggie and Drew McIntyre. They took on the tag team of Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. But you know what? It was still a good match. I am popping big right now for Robert Roode getting up into the corner, the turnbuckle, and then he yells out to the crowd. Linda, do you know it? Yeah. I must have missed that. I'm Big Bob. Ah. Uh. It's so stupid, but it's actually pretty funny. Oh, that's what they've been calling him lately. I mean, you know, I guess in his WWE career, starting off as Bobby Roode, as formerly known as in TNA Impact, then Robert Roode, and now Big Bob. I'm, and him yelling, I'm Big Bob. That's just fantastic. I don't know what Robert Roode ever did to anybody to not get the bigger push. I feel that really should happen with this guy because you know if you think about it what's the edict that the company always says can a wrestler or does a wrestler look like they can main event wrestlemania robert rude looks like he can main event wrestlemania absolutely i mean let's bring back the glorious bobby rude robert rude that's what really got the crowd in i mean with the robe i mean that entrance that worked for him the entrance from that nxt takeover where he had the choir sing him in oh that too oh man that was amazing yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, hopefully one day that can come back for him. I mean, obviously, a long time vet of wrestling and tremendous talent, got the looks. If they bring back that glorious entrance, let him have that at a WrestleMania. I know he got yep. it at a takeover yep. but at a WrestleMania. Um, after slowly building him back on, I think that could be. That's a, that's it right there. You nailed it on the head. All right. Mansoor and Cedric Alexander, uh, Mansoor with a win over Alexander, but really what came of this, uh, his music hit, and uh, here comes Mustafa Ali uh, to kind of trash talk him a little bit, and Mansoor says, no, 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 we're done, and they trash talk each other, and now they got a singles match at Crown Jewel. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a great match to add on to Crown Jewel, and also us just really getting to see this other side of Mansoor, which we have not gotten it all um, since him being in WWE. I mean, he had his little solo run and then was paired up with Ali, where he was this fanboy, yeah. silly, goofy, always happy and smiling. But I liked how they had Ali come out saying, I can't believe you still have that smile on your face after what I did to you. And then, boom, flip the switch. You got Monster giving a really hot promo. I thought I enjoyed so. that. Yeah, I do want to see a one-on-one -on -one match between the two of them because I know they're yeah, both now I talents. See right, right. Yeah, awesome. and it was going to happen because it's Saudi Arabia, it's Crown Jewel, but now I want to see it because they built something. I'm mm -hmm. okay with it. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. And even Ali mentioning your hometown, so can't wait to get that pop, that or hear that pop uh, that uh, Mansoor will get, yeah. All right, sit-down interview with Goldberg and Bobby Lashley, split cameras, separate rooms, probably separate cities, who's to say, but... Uh, <laughs> they started off with, you know, Bill Goldberg, you have said that you're going to do everything you can to hurt Bobby Lashley. I'm like, and in my house, I'm like, nope, you said he would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby yeah. Lashley literally says, no, 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 man. You on live television, on, on national television, said you were going to commit murder. <laughs> thank God. Thank God for Bobby Lashley. Yeah. I mean, we've been saying it. I'm sure others have. And that coming straight out of Bobby Lashley's mouth just made it all the better. Lashley said Goldberg can't kill him and we have him begging for forgiveness. Uh, Lashley ended the uh, interview early. Um, I know that they're reading it because I don't know if you do this, Linda. Listeners, I don't know if you guys do this as well. On shows like this, I watch the eyes while I'm listening and Bobby's eyes were going left to right, left to right, left to right. So he's reading cards and I'm okay with that. I don't care, but uh, if that means that Bobby's reading, is Goldberg reading too? And he's reading about killing. I mean, is that literally <laughs> scripted? Because I thought Goldberg was just freelancing that. Uh, maybe it started uh, just unscripted and now it's turned into a big part of this feud. I mean, Lashley brought it up last week, so might as well let it roll on and just a couple more hours. I think Goldberg even said like within 72 hours, was it at the time? Yeah, he said, that's the other thing I was going to bring up. Somebody's bad at math. 
Because when that 72-hour line came out, again, I'm nitpicking now, right? But it <laughs> was at an hour and a half into the show. So that's 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. 72 hours from then, that show had already been over for eight hours. And okay. in another time zone, which... Yeah. Or, hmm. well, Who knows? Well, it said it was Arabian time. So Arabian time, the show's at 7 p.m. So There we go. Um... I also noticed something, too, right after this. Um, you know, we call Riddle just by his name, last name, not Riddle. It's Matt Riddle. But Matt, look at my beautiful permed locks, Riddle. What's <laughs> going on? Uh, different look. I, I mean, I, I thought he looks very nice and sleek on Riddle. Um, I mean, are we trying to pretty him up, or is he a competitor? I guess they could have waited to crown jewel i don't know every once in a while like xavier woods does that he'll change up his hairstyle at, usually at a that's meeting. xavier it works for xavier i don't know what's going on here <laughs> I, I don't know i did it I, I got a good chuckle at all the different smoke references between uh -huh. and, uh, and riddle though about street profits but it all came together well even riddle himself i think what he said like well put or nice going randy or whatever he said like oh i want to find an script but boy. it went it was funny to me. It was funny to me. I'm still on that. That's the Matthew hair. Thomas's Matthew to watch in 2021. I think what he meant was to watch his hairstyles. Not really that he's going to win anything, but. You know what? I don't know what it is with these Raw episodes we've had. It's something with the hair. It, it just never leaves you. Like, like Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax playing with each other's hair. And now we got Riddle's I don't know. Hair. We'll get to Shayna Baszler in a bit. I got something to say about Shayna Baszler, too. Okay, okay. Uh, the match between uh, RK Bro and the Street Profits was a very solid match. Uh, RK Bro wins by DQ because here comes Styles and Omas. I'm okay with it. It's, I mean, we're working towards a pay per view. It's the go home show. It makes sense. It's fine. <laughs> In front of us the whole time for the inaugural Queen's Crown Tournament, Shayna Baszler, I thought, and I really hadn't mentioned it a lot. Shayna Baszler was built for this tournament. Her tournament was built for her. What is Shayna's, Shayna Baszler's nickname? Queen of Spades. Queen. Yeah. Spades. Who did Shayna Baszler hurt? I mean, what did she do? Is she getting punishment for doing what she did to Nia? Because this should have been her tournament. Nothing against Mountain Dew Drop, but there's no way the final should be Zelina Vega at Mountain Dew Drop. Yeah, I mean, I thought going in for this tournament, she was a top runner, and I thought about her nickname as well, and just that this um, singles momentum they've been, or shift and the momentum, excuse me, that they've been giving her ever since splitting for Anaya finally, I I thought it was meant to be as well. And I, I thought that having Shayna Baszler and Selena Vega at the finals at Crown Jewel would have been more of a main attraction for the yeah. finals, but... Even though I don't mind Selena Vega winning, that doesn't bother me oh, at yeah, all. Oh, yeah, yeah, but... yeah, no. I mean, even do job competing, sure, but I, I too thought this was something that was in the bag for Shayna Bas Baszler. I mean, not just because her name is Queen of Spades. Okay, that helps. But just the way things have been going for her lately. Even her on SmackDown last week, you know, part aligning with... Um... Oh, God. Why am I blanking right now? Um, WWE official. <laughs> Sonya Deville. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I was so... going to throw up the young, but, I mean, you had said official, so then it wasn't funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, yeah, that, that was a surprise that uh, D Drop came up with that win. And, and it, we didn't get a Shayna Baszler attack after, like you would have expected either. All right. Whose dog did she step on? That's what I want to know. Yeah. We'll have to have the interns on that one. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Nikki ASH welcoming Bianca Belair to Raw. Uh, Rio wearing her own gear. Don't know if that means that she found her gear. I uh, don't know if that's a uh, substitute belt, but. Uh, Rhea's got a belt now that looks like it's hers. So, yeah, there was a house show uh, photo. Apparently, she came out in somebody else's gear. Oh, Finn well, Balor took on Mace. Mace looks better now. You know, Dio Madden, formerly known as uh, Mace from uh, Retribution, but th there was no chance Finn Balor was losing to Mace in this one. And <laughs> a nice little face-off between Finn Balor and Xavier Woods uh, in front of the crown. Yeah, I think that really helped. I mean, I loved, you know, we had a little interaction with Xavier, you know, mocking, doing the Finn Balor, oh, which, you know, uh -huh, yeah, that's funny. Xavier uh -huh. runs around, but that, that was not 
funny. Yeah, Xavier Woods putting his arms up in, in the music popped. I popped huge. Yeah. And making the... Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. But, but you know, yeah, it wasn't funny to Finn, but then Kofi came out and separated them. Like, okay, okay, let's save this for Crown Jewel. And I'm glad they didn't make them go too uh, much intensely on one another yet. So I want to see this all at Crown Jewel. Linda, have you ever lost your chi? Perhaps. Um, Has it ever wandered on you? No, I, I don't believe so. I also, I, I'm not sure about meditating in between some crates in the back With, of the arena. With, uh, like, club strobes on you? Yes. yes. That made it the weirdest. The meditating is one thing, maybe in a dark room or whatever, but when they put the lights on them, that was dumb. I, I thought it was just, it didn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, we know that The Miz is, you know, over on Dance with the Stars doing his thing over there, but I, I still think they, they could have gone with the Johnny Drip Drip gimmick. I liked that. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Drip Drip's gone. Uh, he's got the jute and wet, uh, wet and juicy somewhere else, so. <laughs> I know, I, I think in real life, John Morrison is uh, really, uh, like, into the meditation and the, the zen stuff. If sure, you yeah, I'm going to get that. Yeah, but this this is interesting okay um hopefully we'll get to see more in-ring action from morrison again soon though because he's, he's got to go find his chi okay it, it, okay i guess we'll have to wait till he finds his chi yeah yeah yep main event bianca belair and charlotte flair a bit of a surprise with bianca belair not getting the win charlotte flair uh winning or excuse me losing by dq so bianca belair does not win the belt that means when the shows start off their new brands both champions will be on SmackDown. Right. A lot of close calls in that match. I thought it was great. I mean, getting that that was a pay-per-view caliber match in my eyes. And I, too, thought the titles were going to change hands. But, I mean. It would have made a lot of sense, but I'm not mad that it didn't because it switched it up on us. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say this just brings another interesting twist um, on Friday and next Monday since it's going to be the new fully as assembled smackdowns and raws after the draft i've got a bone to pick with that too you know what they tell us the rosters don't go to official until after crown jewel half of the talents have already moved anyway so what's the point or they've been on both or they're from nxt and they're not on nxt anymore yeah i mean come on I think after Crown Jewel's done, after we may see some potential title changes, there'll be this kind of clean slate with the new I'm rosters. ready for a clean slate, and I'm ready to roll into uh, Survivor Series. Series. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Well, hey, that was pretty crisp and pretty clean. We might have hit around the 20-minute mark, Linda. I think so. Nice. Well, hey, it's been great talking to you again the last two days. I'm glad to be back. Like I said, you know, Make sure you guys are hitting up Collar and Elbow. We'll talk to Matthew Thomas tomorrow morning. We will uh, talk NXT. And then the good news is, because Dynamite not airing Wednesday night, our Thursday morning show will get you all ready for Crown Jewel. So for Linda Kay, the man they call me did, hey, thanks for stopping by. Talk to you tomorrow morning. So long, everyone.